The medical watch, one of the world's brightest minds, developed in a Chicago school. How about that? WGN medical reporter Dana Bear introduces us to the Nobel Prize winner in physics, who, as a young woman, already had a lot of questions. Years of rigorous study and pure curiosity helped University of Chicago Lab School alum Andrea Gez win the Nobel Prize in Physics. But it was her high school science teacher who helped prove the theory, women belong in the field. Oh my God, it's a combination of um, very disorienting and surreal and um, off the charts amazing. <laughs> That's what Andrea Gez says it feels like to get a 2 a.m. wake up call from the Nobel Prize Committee. I was just thrilled, surprised, over the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In fact, it was the early moon landings that first inspired the UCLA professor to study astrophysics. You know, that was the first time I was, I, I remember really thinking about the, just the scale and the enormity of the universe. She is enthusiastic. She is exuberant. She has a sense of wonder about her that even at a young age um, was apparent. Judy Keene taught thousands of students during her 40-year career in the science department at the University of Chicago Lab School. Gez, a 1983 graduate, stood out. Well, I realized how lucky I was to have a female science teacher um, because, in fact, she was, for a long time, pretty much the only science uh, female science teacher I had. At some point, I think I decided I wanted to go to MIT and being told, oh, they don't admit girls. And um, going to talk to Ms. Keene and being so upset about this, and she just had a great response. And she said, well, if you want to apply, apply. What's the worst thing they can do? Say no. <laughs> MIT's answer was yes. A PhD from Caltech then followed, then UCLA, where she's been a professor of astrophysics for 25 years. On a career trajectory that brought her to 14,000 feet at the Keck Observatory in Hawaii, where she harnessed the power of the world's largest telescope to explore the possible existence of a giant black hole in the center of the galaxy. I wrote my first proposal and actually it was turned down. <laughs> Gez persisted. She captured her first image in 1995, another in 1996. That's the key to this experiment is actually showing um, the motion of stars, looking at how stars move um, as a way of revealing the presence of a black hole. So a black hole has strong gravity. Stars should orbit the black hole for the same re reason that uh, planets orbit the sun. But there were skeptics in the scientific community. Taking uh, the lesson from Ms. Keene, you know, you just... You just keep going. She went on to develop enhanced optics that allowed her to better visualize the star's patterns as they orbited the high speeds while seemingly kept in line by a powerful gravitational force, evidence of a supermassive black hole, four million times the mass of the sun. Today, from compared to where we were in the beginning, We've increased the evidence for supermassive black holes by a factor of 10 million. Now that's, you know, that's not an incremental change. That's a transformational change. The mother of two boys and one of only four women to win the Nobel Prize in physics, Marie Curie among them. Dr. Gez says her mission will always be to inspire future scientists, just like Judy Keene did for her at the lab school. I've always felt quite passionately about encouraging young girls into the sciences and I think that just being a role model and being visible is such an important way that you can kind of encourage the next generation um, to go forward so having um, more of a platform um, to do that is is super exciting to me there's a lot of hard work in there and you can't kid yourself about that but if you want to really apply yourself and do some interesting stuff. This is an area to consider. Much more work to be done. Dr. Gez says she now wants to probe gravity and the environment surrounding the supermassive black hole. Back to you.